Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're just going to do a brief video looking at uh, just talking briefly about live keys, persistent volumes, installing to USB drives and things because based on some of the questions that I have seen in some of my comments, there's a little bit of confusion about this. And I want to take some time to clarify these and then if we need to later, we can talk about how to actually create a persistent volume with a live key. Now, the reality is that that's generally not something you really need to do, although it's possible. Uh, so first, let's go ahead and get into some of our terminology here regarding Linux and installations and, and USB drives. Of course, I talk about installing Linux on USB drives quite a bit. And uh, I actually used to test all of my distros on USB drives. I end up buying a dedicated external hard drive is what I use now, which is effectively the same same principle. You install to a Linux to a external hard drive just the same way you install to an external um, flash drive. So first, what does a persistent volume mean? Why do people want this? Well, a persistent volume allows you to store not only your files, but also some, not all, but some system settings on a partition on your flash drive on top of what is called a live key or a live CD as it used to be called. So what is a live key? A live key is a installation file that you put on the drive and this allows you to boot the operating system and use the operating system on your computer without installing anything. Now, the majority of Linux distros you're going to download to test and install are live keys. There's a few examples that aren't. Um, Arch Labs, for example, recently dropped their live key. So when you download Arch Labs to install it, all you get is an installer, not a live system to try it. Your uh, Debian is an example of one that will have a simple installer you can grab. If you know you need Debian, you just need to grab something quick, they have the simple installer. Or if you're not quite sure if you want to use it yet, you can download the live version. So you have multiple varieties. And then you have things like Ubuntu, which other than the server, uh, which is a completely different thing because there's no desktop on it at all, everything you would download from Ubuntu is generally an installer, or, or excuse me, a, a live key. So what a live key is, and this is a .iso file or an ISO file, this allows you to burn that onto a either a CD or a USB drive and boot the computer into that operating system without installing it. So on Ubuntu, for example, when you go ahead and install this, uh, put this on the disk, uh, right to the disk, and I have videos about how to do that from Windows, Mac, and, and Linux, then you put that guy into the computer, you boot off of that drive, and now on Ubuntu, for example, it asks you, would you like to install this or would you like to try this? Several of your live keys just boot right on into a desktop environment and there is an install icon on the desktop. So that is a live key. Now, can you add a persistent volume to that? Yes. Um, it is not something that is necessarily something you would need to do. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Now, things, one of the big reasons you might is a security-based system because nothing's going to get written to the system of that drive. When you pull the thing out and reboot the computer, it kind of goes back to ground zero again. So if it's a high-risk file, you're looking at some email like, this might be the email attachment I needed, but I'm not completely sure. Booting into a live key and opening it there is the safest bet unless you're running some good security system because the thing, it, it could infect the whole system, doesn't matter. Once you close the system down and reboot it, it just goes back to zero again. Um, that is one of the reasons why you might. Now, this being said, there are several distributions that have easy tools to create a persistent volume included in them because the operating system is designed to run as a live key. The two that come to my mind immediately are Tails and Nopix. And Tails for sure, I in fact have an entire video about how to create a persistent volume on Tails. It is simply a menu item that they gave you to allow you to use the remainder of the disk after Tails is on there to create the persistent volume. Now there is a little caveat to this, and that is that you actually 
there is a, a way to sort of de facto install Tails to a USB drive that is different than the way you'd install it to something else. And you have to have done that step to install the persistent volume on it. That's a little bit more of a, of a, um, a niche situation. And then there's Nopix is the other one that comes to mind. This is also designed to run as a live key. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I think they have a tool for how to create the persistent volume as well. I've not done it on there as well. But anyway, these are all systems that are designed to run as a live uh, live implementation, a, a live distribution where you don't need to install it. Now, why do I say that you don't generally need to do that? Well, the reason is you can install Linux to a drive, which is not the same as burning an ISO to it. So when I would do this, I would grab the ISO from the internet, put it onto a drive so that I can boot the computer with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my second drive, and this is the one where the file is actually installed to. So this one behaves as my live key, uh, live key CD, which will allow me to install the Linux distro. Linux is installed on this. Now, when Linux is installed on your thumb drive, you do not need persistence automatically the rest of this drive is just like installing Linux on an internal hard drive. There is no difference. All right, so on this guy here, it's gonna partition out, it's gonna have a bootloader, so you're gonna have Grub, it's gonna have the operating system, and then it's gonna have your home folder. You do not need persistence if you are installing it. Now, what does that look like? It looks like booting up Ubuntu, for example, clicking the install, and then plugging in your USB drive and installing onto this. That is no longer a live key. This is now a full installation of which you do not need a persistent volume. And so that's really your breakdown of the terminology. The live key or ISO allows you to boot into the live environment. There are a few rare niche cases where you might want a persistent volume on that, but for the most part, that's going to allow you to install it. Once you install it, now why would you want to install it? Well, you can do any system changes. You can install drivers, which you can't do to a persistent volume. All of the files get saved. This is really no different than having a hard drive in your computer with Linux installed on it. So you do not need persistence if you do that. And these, the tutorials that I have about how to install Linux on a, um, on a USB drive like this, these are not persistent volumes. These are not live keys with persistent volumes. So I really wanted to do this video to clear that up because based on the questions that I've been getting, I've had a lot of people ask me about that. You know, how do you put persistence on it? Well, you don't need to, you just install to the drive. Now, of course, Tails and Nopix and a few other distros out there, I think uh, I think Puppy Linux is another one that is designed to be run from a USB key with persistence. So I think that one does as well. I, I haven't used that one, so I don't remember for sure. However, um, when you're using those, a system that's kind of designed to run with persistence will easily have uh, persistence tools to install them. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. If they are, if they don't, then there is an application which is uh, it was called Make USB. I think. Actually, I think that was the old name. Um, let's see. That was the old name. I think it's like called Dust now, like D U S, if I remember correctly. Um, so that is a that is the file that you need to install to create persistence onto something like an Ubuntu Live Key. So hopefully that clears it up. If you are installing to your USB drive, that is no longer a live key and there's no need for persistence because everything behaves just like a hard drive. Whatever you do on this, on any computer, and the reason you wanna do this, portability. I can take this guy here, which this is either Debian or Linux Mint Budgie, I don't know. I have two drives, they're the exact same drives. One of them has Debian uh, with three desktop environments. The other one has Linux Mint Budgie on it. And I uh, forget which one this one is uh, because I've never labeled them. <laughs> so this guy here, I can take this guy out. I can, because of portability, I can plug it into any computer that I have or encounter. It's going to boot just fine. And anything that I do is automatically saved to the disk. It doesn't matter. 
no persistence needed. If I did a live CD, anything I do on the live key, nothing is saved, nothing is retained. If I download a file, it disappears when I load it the next time. So that's really your difference. Installation, everything saved, live key, nothing is saved. So if you need a live key and things being saved, that's when you need the persistent volume, but generally you would want to install your typical Linux distro rather than run it as a live key anyway. So if I have enough people saying, hey, okay, I get all that, now can you show me how to do a persistent volume? I'll take the time to learn how to do it and I'll show you guys how to do it. But I did really just wanna clarify that because I've had a lot of questions around that around that end. Um, of course, what's the difference between um, the USB um, flash drive and the USB external hard drive? Mm, really nothing. Um, the hard drive actually runs a little bit better. You will find after a while these these have a limited amount of read writes, and so they will eventually die out, maybe run a little slow. Um, maybe it's because the small file size of them, you know. Uh, I know the budgie one, there's something about Linux Mint that seems to add some extra files, or something happened in my budgie uh, where it got, the hard drive got full and it, so it wouldn't boot, and I figured out that I need to just get in there and remove the files, because these are 32 megabytes and the hard drive I have is a whole terabyte. So installing to the external hard drive is definitely a better option if you have that option, but if you don't or you're tight on funds, a USB uh, flash drive like this and make sure you always get the 3.0 or higher ones, 3.0, uh, these guys are going to run just fine and they're going to cost you no more than 10, 20 bucks. So you can have an entire separate computer just like this. You could also get one of these guys, throw this on your keychain so you always have a Linux distro wherever you're at. Of course, if you are putting it on a keychain, install a Linux distro that supports encryption. You do not want to drop your Linux distro, have somebody plug it in and get access to everything you're doing. That's the beauty of Tails. It's really designed for that principle. So. Uh, with that being said, hopefully this was a very helpful video for you. Like I said, if I get enough people saying, hey, okay, I get all that, but show me how to do a persistent volume on a live Ubuntu or something, I'll go ahead and uh, look into it and get a video out. So uh, with that being said, um, thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.